Okay, here it is. The pair de terre that becomes the piece de resistance. Hey, maybe it is Paris after all. <laughs> well, you decide. Check it out. I think one of the things that's most satisfying is when you can really live in every single inch of your room. Now, from the beginning, we started with the room with the bed in kind of an awkward situation. We knew that we had to have a dual function situation, so first we examined specifically how we were going to allocate space. The next thing we wanted to do was create a room within a room, and our device for that was our wonderful bed. With that in place, everything trimmed, the room fully accessorized, look what we have here. You would think that I'm in a lovely big living room, when the reality is I'm not at all. We've created this living space because of the wall partition that we've put up between this space and the bedroom area. Now, one of the things that you'll notice right away is because we have this wonderful wall here, we now have a wall to push a sofa up against. And I gotta tell you, there is still plenty of room. Remember, 18 inches is all the human form needs to get around things. Now, some of the interesting things you'll see in the room, we'll start with the coffee table here. This is actually a custom, custom design piece, and it's, it's actually made to simulate two folding chairs with a slab put between the two of them. But this is actually designed not only to look like that, but think about it. This is something that you could easily achieve on your own with just using folding chairs. On the floor here, we have a sensational inlay linoleum rug. Yeah, that's that old linoleum that you used to rip out of houses. Well, now people are using that as an art form, and I think it's very tasty here. The geometrics against the hardwood floors really sets it off. Now, speaking of color, we've chosen to go very monochromatic using um, our accessories in primarily silver, white, and cream. Now remember, this room is completely driven by function first, form comes later, and I think we've really accomplished that. In order to make the function of the living room work, we have to have an entertainment center, but there certainly wasn't room for a big armoire, and who wants to see the television? So, literally out of a aluminum grating and just a simple box made out of pine that we sprayed silver and then trimmed out in aluminum, we've made this wonderful little rolling cart. And as I turn this around, you can see here that there's ample room for not only the television set, but you've still got all this room under here for your CDs and your VCR and that sort of thing. Here we happen to have a TV VCR combination. That's great when company isn't here or you want to watch a game or something, but then just by simply turning this back around, you end up with yet another surface, which is so terrific. Now, as far as our seating goes, we have the sofa over here. We have over there sort of the updated version of the butterfly chair that's all very quilted. And over here now, we've treated this whole window area by painting it a wonderful crisp, like a white linen. And then what we've simply done is we've taken foam and we've actually trimmed the whole outside of this in foam to bring the color from the rest of the room over into this area, which looks great. Now, to sort of heighten the effect here and soften the edges just slightly, we went and bought these pre-bought drapes from a company called Linens and Things, and they already have a grommet already in them. Again, using our same towel bar concept, we put two towel bars up on either end. These are not there to open and close. These are there to add a soft fabric texture to the room and help absorb a little bit of the acoustics. Up on top, to pull our eye up into the room, we took three mail order triangles, wall triangles they call them, and with galvanized paint, well, it simulates galvanized paint. We simply sprayed each of these and put these wonderful silver objects de art up on top. And again, the idea is if you're using the chrome and silver as your accent, then remember to disperse those accents evenly around the room so the eye goes from sparkle to sparkle to sparkle. Here's a sparkle again that we just saw. And of course, on the other side of the wall, we have the companion to that. All very streamlined, all very symmetrical. We've kept everything intentionally very sparse. Clutter can really ruin the look of a room like this. And so you've got to be disciplined and learn to put your magazines away. Oh yeah, the magazine rack, that's right here. Remember this? Here we just took the same kind of paint, what we just simply rolled on to, a, to simulate actually a galvanized effect. And all of our magazines and clutter are all back here. So on one side, we've got magazines. On the other side, we have magazines. But it could easily double because this adjoins the room. It could easily be a shoe rack on that side. This is sensational and it hangs directly on the wall. Rather than it taking up space, we've only covered really about 10 inches from the wall. It's actually given us that two-dimensional texture that we're looking for, and it allowed us to push up our little mini bar. Isn't that great looking? Now here we see some wonderful objects that we found. 
Here we've got our little martini shakers and our glasses, and under here we've got enough room for a wine rack, and actually, those are actually just um, soda bottles that we sprayed, which I think is sort of fun as well. Now, I suppose you're wondering what this is. Well, this is one of those things that you really use your imagination. This is simply two cider jugs that are suspended from their electrical cords on a, a steel arm. That's all that is, but aren't they terrific? They're frosted in their front, and in the back, they're left open. But it just adds a certain high-tech quality to all the formalness of the room. Now, if this sort of cider jug, high techy thing is a little too ambitious or a little too avant-garde for you, look what we did just by simply taking one, two, three, four, five lampshades, hot gluing them together, sliding them onto a pole, and wrapping Christmas lights around the pole. It's a beautiful illuminary that looks like it came from the Museum of Modern Art. <laughs> so cool, so cheap, it works. Now, we also want to talk about when we're working in small spaces like this to keep your textures rich. Aluminum is very rich. The leather couch really says it. Now, if you can't afford a leather couch, a simple beige couch or a love seat with just a lovely beige throw over it will give the same effect. Let's talk about this for just a second. Remember our wall for our bedroom. This is what divides this space from the bedroom living area. Here, we had a wonderful faux finisher come in and actually do a wonderful linen textured finish on this wall, which I think really gives it a wonderful organic feel. This is our cross-linker. This is really the center of our room. As we work our way around, you'll notice that the majority of our theme was all done with black and white photographs, and we've also put a uh, stacked black and white photographs here with a wonderful chrome chair. So right now, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six people seating, seven, because this can be pulled up, and now it's time for us to go into the piece de resistance, the bedroom. Let's go take a look. Now, one of the reasons why this place looks so spacious is because it's all done in a monochromatic scheme. It's all done in a combination of creams as our highlight contrast colors, but then everything else is done with deep greens and deep putties, okay? It's what gives everything a very homogenous look. Look at the bed now. Instead of going fussy, flouncy, cutesy, we've kept everything very straight and very sort of seamless in a sense. We start with our back pillows here that are right under our porthole that gives us this wonderful view. We've added a swag lamp here, which is really quite nice. It's fully adjustable, so you can read in bed. And we've just taken two big body pillows, they call them. We've joined them end to end. So there's one long sort of titsy roll back here. And then in the front here, very symmetrically, we've placed our pillows. Everything is straight up and down. It's all about clean, slick lines. Now, instead of doing an elaborate dust ruffle, everything again stays very flat. Down at the bottom of the bed, you see a waffle weave that we've chosen. And not only does it start there and connect, but then our headboard has been completely upholstered as well. This is basically a slip cover that's gone over that, that treatment that I showed you. This is where we use the theater flat technique, but again, you can use the corridors. And just to add a great high-tech element to it, at the far end, we add a little detail by just taking grommets, inserting those grommets into the fabric all the way down, and adding loop ties, which is great looking. Now, to bring that green to the end of the bed, we add a long Tootsie Roll pillow here. So literally, you can lean against here and look out the porthole to read, and you can lean against here when you want to sleep. So it works out very well. And again, we've padded all the inside of the area here on the other side of the bookcase. That's important because we don't like sharp edges. You don't want to rub your elbow on there in the middle of the night and get splinters. That's not a good thing. And again, we've added more of our beautiful black and white photographs and those wonderful chrome accessories. Now back here, we've picked up yet an additional living space area. Remember, it was critical for us to put the bed in the middle of the room because not only did it divide the space between the bedroom and the living room, but it gave us divisions all the way around the room. It's sort of like putting a great big banquette in a hotel lobby. It just breaks up all the spaces. Now here we just have a frosted glass desk, and again, this is on wheels. This can actually double as a dining room table for two, if you want. But we're using it here as sort of a second vanity slash um, little office area here. This is a great place for a computer as well. So we've got an additional area here, and that butts up against this fabulous light box. Now remember, we talked about in a lot of the Manhattan apartments especially, all your light is coming from the front view. Here to simulate light in the room, we've just simply taken a big pine, like sandbox basically, just a big square pine. We faced it with plexiglass and lit it from behind. So when it's off in the evening, it's 
you know, it's, it's dark so you can sleep properly, but when it's on, it casts this beautiful glow to this side of the room and acts as an illuminary, really almost like a modern piece of sculpture. So we love that. Now, as we work our way around the bed, remember it's dividing all of these wonderful spaces. Look at all this space back here. It's amazing what you can get in small spaces. Behind me here, because the bathroom was so small, we've got a valet here, which is great when you come home from work. You can put your suit on here, let it naturally hang out. We also have a nice fluffy bath mat, so it's not cluttering up the, in this is a great place for the bath mat to dry instead of tripping over it in a small bathroom. And we also have our nice big fluffy robe. The key here is, think of fabulous hotel rooms. In a fabulous hotel room, all these white fluffy things really have a very luxurious feeling about them, so it's perfectly fine for these to be visible. No different than the bookshelves that are at the front where we have the stacked towels. That again gives a wonderful sense of opulence and it also gives more of a sense of cushion luxury. This is probably one of my favorite areas. Here what we've done on the back of the bed, okay, this is the footboard of the bed. We took a very inexpensive round mirror because the round here duplicates the roundness that we have as we look through our porthole on the head part of the bed. But here there was just enough room to add a lovely little ledge to wonderful chrome lamp accessories. Then we went to our bed and bath store and we found these basically are soap dispensers, but we didn't do one. We did one, two, three, four, five, six. They're all lined up very stately. They have a very sculptural effect. But imagine, you know, in small spaces like this, you've got to be very careful about lots of clutter. So let's say you've got mouthwash and shampoo and you name it, all your regimens, hand cream, lotions, all of that sort of thing is now nicely concealed by these beautiful sculptural effects. And down here we have three jewelry boxes. So as we work our way around this way, you gotta eat, right? So over here what we've done is we've actually created a table cart. When you turn it around and you're ready to use it, it's all full of everything from your hot plate to your electric skillet and your microwave. When it's faced the other way, it looks great. Now don't be afraid to take some of these wonderful containers like the canisters and the teapot and the hot plate. Those things are such a high-tech look. They, they again look very, very sort of wonderful and really much a very deliberate part of the high-tech look. And again, the same way that we've done the towel bars and the pictures all around the room, we've done that again over here. Add a few plants and you're in business. So, for those of you who are really tired of living in very small spaces, the idea is to create a room within a room and you will be surprised by using a bed structure like this to actually break up the entire space. You end up with one, two, three, four, five, six complete living areas all in one room.